Hi, welcome today, where we're going to be taking a glance at one of the flutes from my collection. And I'm not quite sure why I haven't shared this with you earlier. I've had this for quite a few years. This is a Laughing Crow flute by Richard Maynard. I believe he is out of Tucson, Arizona. And I did look at his website um, just prior to turning on the cameras and all that kind of stuff. He has backlogged. His website is one that doesn't get updated on a regular basis. His focus is to make flutes for you and I. Um, and, and updating website takes a lot of work. For any of those that do it, I'm sure you know and, and totally understand what I'm saying there. His flutes are pretty amazing. Um, he's been making them for quite a few years. And I'm not sure, just right off the top of my head, I can't tell generally if this is a one-piece routed design or a two, excuse me, a one-piece board design or a two-piece routed design. I will try to do a closer look and include that in the comment or in the description box below this video, along with his contact information. He's supposed to have some of his very, very basic beginner type flutes available. The other flutes, custom flutes and some of his nicer standard flutes like this, I believe he's got a waiting list to, to try to fulfill orders as they come in. This is one of his standards. It's called the Paduke flute. Paduke is a, a wood that comes out of Africa. It's a hardwood, very dense hardwood. Um, and it has kind of a orangey reddish cast to it. Has a drop nest, features his angled foot end, and his laughing crow. It's kind of a modern take on a crow block. Has a little cabochon here between the nest and the finger holes. Drop nest, if I didn't say that already. Fairly thick wall. Um, so very, very tough, durable flute, and it has a, he's supposed to use like a Danish oil to seal the wood, and then he uses a polyurethane type finish on the outside. Um, so it's very, very durable. I, I don't think you'd have to worry about taking these anywhere, things like that. I believe the reason that I haven't shared this sooner is because not only am I very critical on the sound characteristics of the flutes that I prefer to play, I'm also very critical on how they look be quite honest. In fact, that might be the first thing that comes to mind when I go to pick out a flute. If I'm not liking the looks of it, I'm less likely to want to pick it up and play it. While this flute doesn't look bad by any means, um, I, I, I like the foot end, the angled foot end. I like the slow tapered mouthpiece area there. I enjoy the block. To me, this 
particular flute, and, and I don't know that he's making them like this today. This has a very long, slow air chamber mouthpiece uh, section compared to the rest of the flute. To me, it just looks a little front end heavy, shall we say. I love the sound of it, and this is what it sounds like dry. Lovely, lovely sound. A little bit bold. It's got probably, I'm going to say about a one inch bore, something like that. I will measure that and include it down in the description box below here with his contact information. Um, Love the way it plays. I love the way it sounds. It, it seems to be front end heavy, just looks wise. It, it doesn't feel all that strange. Yes, it's a hardwood and it, there, has, there is a little bit of weight to it because of that, because it is a very hard, dense wood, but it doesn't feel like I have to hold it up strangely or anything like that in playing position. I don't know. You tell me what you think. Does that look out of proportion to you as it does to me? I mean, that, that's, that's plain and simple. If it would have tuning holes and this extended a little bit, I probably would not be thinking along those lines. But this doesn't have tuning holes, it's just, you know, this, this is the foot end of the flute and how it is tuned. He cuts that until he reaches the fundamental note that he wants. Anyway. Love the voice, it's very clear, very clean. Now let's hear that beautiful sound with a little reverb and delay added.
It's pretty stable flute. Takes a fair amount of air pressure to get to that higher octave. It kind of gets there and comes down. It's smooth, but there's there's kind of a definite transition. If I if I'm trying to convey what I feel like I'm feeling and hearing correctly. The block has a very, very, very tiny chimney. Sloped slightly over the true sound hole. Fairly low profile block that I like. I don't know why I don't play this more. I, I need to make an effort. I really do because I do love the sound of it. I love the way it plays. has just a tiny bit of hesitation when I'm playing those above the octave notes and want to go down to that high G. It, it wants to kind of hang on that high note before it, it locks into that G unless I drop my air pressure. then it does it just fine. But I am a fairly aggressive flute player, exuberant. I like to push air through a flute. I like, I like the responsiveness of this flute and other ones with this type of voice and clarity. Um, they just I love that type of playing style on flutes, or playing characteristics on flutes. Richard Maynard, flute maker that's been doing this for quite some time. When I first started, I, I knew of him, and I got this probably, I'm gonna say, I started in 2008, my flute journey, and I'm, I'm gonna say I had this by 2010, somewhere in there. I need to play it more. I wanna thank you for watching. If you haven't yet, please subscribe. Click the little bell down over there so that you could be notified the next time I post a video. Could be taking a first look at something I'm adding to my musical toolbox could be a flute review where I take a closer in-depth look at one of the flutes from my collection. Could be a music video where the Native American style flute gets the spotlight shown on it. It takes kind of the melody or lead portion. It tells the story. Could be by itself, could be more than one flute. It could be with many other types of instruments as well could be a tutorial on how to play the Native American style flute. One of the easiest instruments to learn in its most basic playing style, a pentatonic minor uh, scale. And back down. I missed that hole. It's that simple, just those notes and you can create all kinds of melodies. 
Thank you again for watching, and I hope you have a fantastic day. Take care.